Hi, I'm Mark and this is Foothill Paint and Fabrication. Today we're going to be getting back on the 1950 Chevy truck fenders, all four of them. We're going to be guide coating them and uh, see how well we did on our body work and blocking out. So let's just jump right to it and get some sanding done. Okay, what we're going to be using today is we're back on 240 grit because we're still straightening the fenders and making sure there's no waves or uh, you know anything like that. So we'll be back using 240 grit on, uh, we've got the long board there, we've got a shorter one, I've got my flexible Durablox. Uh, so we'll go over the, all, the fenders all over with 240 and see how, how well our body work and filler work uh, came out. And then once that's done, we'll air and blow them off and then, uh, then we'll use the guide coat. So this is a dry guide coat. I've been using it for years. I love this stuff. You don't have to wait for paint to dry. It doesn't clog your sandpaper. It's just the way to go. So if, you have, if you're using paint still, uh, I strongly recommend you pick some of this stuff up. It's, it's a lifesaver and it will make your body panels come out so much straighter. Uh, it, it helps you find everything. I mean, low spots, sand scratches, uh, you name it, it, it helps. And it's quick and easy. No, no gun to clean, no rattle cans to deal with. You know, I don't know if you've used rattle cans to uh, guide coat. You gotta let it dry, and then that paint clogs your sandpaper more than the primer. It's just a pain in the butt. So this stuff is awesome. I, I don't even know how long I've had this container. It's done a couple of cars already. So, uh, you know, it's, it's great stuff. So let's jump over to the fenders. We're gonna block them out a little bit with some uh, 240, see where we ended up after, uh, you know, after we're done with all the body work and everything and uh, hit this prime and see, you know, see what it looks like. Okay, as you recall from the other video, we had a crease right here where something had hit this fender on the top. We pushed that dent out, filled it, and uh, it got a two or three coats of primer right here. The rest of the fenders uh, just got the one single coat. So I uh, put a little extra primer at the spot to take care of some sand scratches, possibly high and low spots. So we're gonna go ahead and block this area out a little bit and see how we did. And then, uh, then we'll move to the other parts of the fenders. So right away I can see I've got a low spot right here because it's uh, not as white gray as the surrounding area. So we don't even need guide coat. I actually can feel it with my finger. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised I even missed that before we got prime on it. So we got another little one here. So we're gonna hit this a little bit longer. I don't wanna keep adding material. I wanna subtract material because we don't want so much film thickness on these fenders. They've already got multiple coats of paint jobs on them. So we don't want to keep piling on up to get to where we want to go. We want to keep blocking down until we start to see the base color through it again. So uh, I'm going to remove this. This primer is sacrificial. It should be just a fill. I mean, it's not just for uh, to give us another layer to sand. We want to remove most of it and then get back down to as close to we can as the color that was underneath it, which was blue and other colors. So we're gonna sand these down really well, and then if we need to, we'll fill this area or any other areas. And then before it goes to paint, they'll get another good coat of primer as more of a sealer and a base coat. And then we can sand that with you know 400 grit or 600 grit and get it red, ready for uh, color. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep sanding on this a little bit and see where we end up. Okay, so I spent uh, about 50 minutes, an hour, sanding uh, this fender and this fender. I'll just be working on these two and I'll do the others off, off camera. But you can see, we're starting to go through in a few spots, which is perfectly fine. There's a little low spot here and there, so we're gonna get some guide coat on these. And a few spots showed up just sanding, so those are gonna pop up real easy once we put the guide coat on. Okay, the 
The thing to remember about this stuff, it gets everywhere. So try not to touch your face. I don't know if I've got dust and black marks on my face already, uh, but it, it gets everywhere. So just be careful with it. A little bit goes a long way. This is the applicator and it comes in this little uh, tray. So you just kind of put this on here and give it a little, little shake like that. And it kind of comes up through those holes and you just get a little bit on your applicator pad, okay? And try not to drop this. Whatever you do, try not to drop it. So then I just kind of squish it around here a little bit on there and spread that out into this kind of foam pad thing. And then I just start applying it. It doesn't need to be super thick. You want to get full coverage though, so whatever direction you need to go, there's no right, right or wrong on that. So you want to make sure you just kind of rub it in everywhere. And then, what I've found is where the dents are, what I've been doing a lot of work, I have the least problems. And uh, this stuff really helps me find the stuff that I didn't know was there. Now I'll find low spots in my body work or sand scratches, stuff like that. But I won't, uh, I usually don't uh, find big problems. It's just fine tuning stuff. So you can see it's still going. And I've blown these fenders off really well with my hand or use a clean rag and the air hose to break all that dust loose so you don't contaminate. I got a little bit of uh, gray dust on here, but it's not the end of the world. So we're just gonna go around on these real quick. And you can see I haven't retouched back in here. So look, I've done all this with just that little bit of mount. I'm just gonna go over this whole thing. And then I'll get the other one off camera and then, uh, then we'll get to sand it on it and we'll see how, what it brings up. Okay, we got them both guide coated. So the next step is to block them out again. I'll be doing it with 240 again and we'll see what, uh, what stays and what goes. Obviously there's light gray primer underneath the guide coat so it's gonna stand, this black, is, black guide coat is gonna stand out quite a bit. Um, red or buff, um, it's still gonna stand out. Now black, I don't even know if they make a white guide coat so uh, maybe I should look into that. So we're gonna block these out again real quick and I'll bring you back after we're done and we'll see, uh, we'll see what shows up. Okay, I'll do a little blocking on camera so you guys can see what to expect using this stuff. Um, hopefully uh, it'll convince you to go ahead and start using this dry guide coat. You can see it sands really easy, it doesn't clog. It's no big deal. Super easy to use and it works great. So we can already see we got three or four little spots right here that we're gonna be able to sand those out. They're so shallow, we'll be able to sand those out blocking. You don't wanna focus on those spots. You just wanna keep going over the top of the whole area until they're gone, and if they don't disappear, then we'll take care of that later. The guide coat doesn't do you any good unless you got a block in your hand. If you're using just sandpaper in your hand, all you're gonna do is sand that down. Now that's not bad if you're just trying to remove sand scratches. Let's say you're on your final sand then you want to guide coat the whole thing and then you're sanding with 400 or 600 uh, dry or wet and dry. And you want to make sure you get all the sand scratches out because um, they'll hide on you in this uh, light colored primers. They'll hide, you can't see them. So that's a good thing with a sanding pad, you know, and go over the whole thing. But for this, we're still straightening these fenders out. And just like that, 
we just exposed, uh, you know, I don't know, we got six or eight little spots here. Just in this one spot. Now this one had a lot of, uh, uh, th there was a repair, old repair here, and when I did a few uh, chip fill filling, it kind of exposed some uh, waviness. So let's take a look real quick. So here, 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 there, we've got a deep one there. So when they're kind of spread out and shallow and you can see right through them, you know you're going to be able to block that out. This one, it's well defined, see? And uh, I can feel a roughness there, but I can't feel a dent. So we'll go over that a little bit. And it's starting to fade away. But see, I'm not focusing on that one spot. I'm focusing on everything around it. We're using that primer, that polyester primer, as our fill. And we're just sanding it down. So we're not even close to getting through to the blue underneath. So we still have a ways to go. Probably sand this one out, that one out. That one's a little deep, but it might be able to get it out. But that's how it works. You just sand it down, kind of go over everything, and then let whatever's low show up. Then you go back and figure out what you need to do. Can I sand that out all the way? If you start and then the base color starts coming up, then you stop and then figure out what you're going to do. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So I'm going to finish uh, sand blocking this fender out. Then we're going to blow them off real good and kind of talk about uh, the game plan to take care of some of these low spots, you know, what you do and, and when to do it. Okay, we have both fenders blocked out. And I've, I've taken them as far as I can without actually creating more of a problem trying to get rid of a problem. Like this one right here, it's, uh, it's just too deep to block out. It's, even though there's primary still, I'm, I'm starting to get a little blue showing through. And I know that's just too deep. I'll just make a low, a smooth low spot is what I'll end up doing if I just keep pushing at it. So I'm going to stop on all of these and we're going to fill them with some uh, catalyzed glazing. So you notice I put, uh, this is a pencil mark all around all of them. And the reason I do that is because you lose them. You get mix up some uh, glazing and then you walk around trying to find them all and then you can't find them all and you, ultimately you miss them before, uh, your, uh, before your glazing sets up. So I'm gonna take some 80 grit and all I'm gonna do is just rough this area up That'll get rid of the dry guide coat. And it'll give us something to stick the glaze to. And I stay inside my lines and that's all I do. So I'm gonna go around and do that to all these little spots. Got a couple little ones here, a little one there kind of a crease kind of a thing going on here. I can't believe I didn't see that when I was blocking out the first time. And then uh, on this fender, it's a lot less dramatic. Just a couple little spots, a little low spot there. I could probably block out, but I'm not liking the way it feels. So, and just a couple of little spots here and there. So we're gonna go ahead and get these all scuffed and then we're gonna get some glazing mixed up. Okay, we got some glaze on here. You can see I took masking tape and I taped around the low spots. That keeps me from, uh, it does two things. The thickness of the masking tape gives me a nice uh, something to screed to so I don't put too much material on. And it also keeps the area around it clean. I've only got the one little low spot. So I just put that tape on there. And then you just peel it off before the Glaze hardens all the way. And you've got a nice thin application. I mean, that's just, that's paper thin or masking tape thin. So, and that's really what I want. Because these low spots are minuscule, but they're deep enough that blocking, continue to blocking isn't going to do it. So I'm going to go and unmask these. I got a few others to put down. It's a little hot in the shop. The uh, glaze starts setting up on me, so I had to give up on that batch. 
get these unmasked real quick and then I'll get the others and then I'm gonna let this stuff set up and get back to it and uh, start blocking it out. Okay, I got all the spots resanded. Took about an hour and five minutes. Exposed a few spots I did not fill well enough. I used, uh, switched over to the cherry block, piece of cherry wood, and I put 120 on it. 240 was too fine to get these down flat enough. Um, so, too fine a sandpaper, you push too hard, and then you distort the metal while you're sanding. So, so I got a little bit right here I need to add, and I think a little bit along here. A little spot right there and a little spot right here and that's it i didn't those were a little deeper than i thought uh, this one i should have covered a little bit larger area but other than that looks pretty good so i'm going to mix up some more uh, glazing and uh, get those spots hit real quick and then we'll get them sanded and these will be about ready for spot priming okay the two fenders i've been working on are uh, pretty straightened out they look good they feel good as you can see, we went through the primer in a lot of spots, and that's perfectly fine. That primer was there to help us straighten these fenders out. It's not, it's not the base underneath the color yet. So we went through, we had to fill some spots, and it helped us smooth out a lot of these, these areas where we had some uh, unevenness. So this up here, I think I can feel something, but I think it's just a different texture between the filler, the primer, the base paint, and a little bit of steel showing right there. So you can't always trust your hands to feel the high and low spots. Now this fender over here, we hardly went through. I mean, you can see a few spots. We're just starting to go through, which is just about perfect because we don't want to build up a bunch of paint, uh, paint film thickness on here. These fenders, remember, they already have multiple paint jobs on them. Had the ripple back here where we went through because we just kept sanding on it. A little spot here and there. You can actually see some original body filler from who knows how long ago. And then on the uh, front of this fender, you can see where the patch panel was. I have uh, a little bit more work and a little low spot right over here. But the next step will be to spot prime all these, but I won't do that until I uh, block out and guide coat the other two fenders. So once those are done, then we'll do some spot priming and then get that re-sanded and then get a final coat of primer and get them ready for the final sand. Okay, finished uh, filling in all the low spots that the guide coating exposed and then Got those areas blocked out and then spot primed. So I only primed the spots that I worked that were low. I don't want to uh, keep piling on material on here. It's just adding film thickness we don't need and also just wasting material at 100 bucks a gallon. You know, the primer's not free, so there's no reason to keep piling it on there. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to block out the locations I did the work only, and then we're going to roll these outside and wet sand them with some 320 grit and get them prepped for their final prime. And then we'll sand those, these with four or 600 grit. I haven't decided yet. And then, uh, then they'll be ready to be prepped for final paint. Okay, we're moving on to wet sanding these uh, four fenders with some 320 grit. I got my bucket of water, got my sandpaper, have my sanding pad. Now always remember, never sand with just your hand and sandpaper because your fingers will push grooves or ripples into the primer or the paint or the clear. So you always wanna make sure there's something between your hand and the sandpaper, whether it's a block or whatever, as long as there's something in there to distribute the load and uh, make sure that you don't, your fingers aren't pushing down in one spot, um, causing some sort of ripple. It will show, uh, I've done it myself, uh, killed, you know, hated myself for doing it, and then I had to re-sand the whole area and polish it out, it was ha happened to be in clear. So always make sure you have something between your hand and the sandpaper when you're uh, when you're sanding. So I'm not going to bore you with uh, me wet sanding these. I'm going to go through it real quick, and then uh, then we're going to finish up.
Now, as you can see, I'm kind of sanding just like I'm blocking out. I'm not going in circles or anything and just trying to smooth this. I'm still straightening. So we're going to get primer on them next. And then, uh, then it'll be more about smoothing it out with four or 600 grit for the base coat. So you want to make sure you're always still shooting for straightness. Um, I feel a little, a little spot over here on the fender. Um, I don't know if it's a texture thing or if there's a little ripple there or not. I'll have to figure that out. But I'm going to go over the fender one more time and then it'll be ready to be cleaned. Okay, so we got the fender all sanded really well. The one exception to the rule on the sanding pad is to get down and around like the headlight area here, down inside these lips where the, the grill and everything mounts and down along the, uh, where the hood closes on. There's a lot of ripples, a lot of low spots, high spots from the stamping process and a sanding pad's not gonna get down inside there. So now we have to switch to just hand. I'll go around the lip, the underside of the lip as well, and then around here, and then all the way around to make sure everything gets sanded before we put any more coats of primer on this. So I'm gonna do that real quick, and this fender will be done. Okay, that just about wraps up this video on guide coating. We've got them to wet sanded to 320, so now we know they're straight. Um, the next step is to get them clean. I've got my wash bucket here. It's a little bit of dish soap in it and a wash mitt. This mitt, all I ever use this on is stuff like this. I don't use it on my truck and then come back here because I could transfer some road grime or oil or something from the truck onto panels. So um, I always just use this as a dedicated mitt just for this. So get them nice and clean. So I'm gonna scrub these up and uh, then the next step will be getting them primed and ready for paint. So thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Hit that like and subscribe button and hit that bell so you get notification when I uh, release another video.